your home for Ducks basketball. I think we have talent. We have some good experience. Duarte to the basket, the slam. Omarui, 4-3, yeah! I think we have enough talent to have a very competitive team. Oh, and a steal and slam for Williams. I think we've got as much talent, if not more, than we've ever had in our game. Mike Till fires, yes! Only right corner three, another movie ball! The Ducks have done the double championship for the second time in three years. The Ducks are Pac-12 champions! It's time for Tip-Off Tuesday, presented by Carl's Jr. on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Visit your locally family-owned and operated Carl's Jr. today. Carl's Jr., feed your happy. From the Country Financial Studio, alongside Terry Johns, here's Joey Mack. Postseason basketball. Oh, I'm so excited to get into it. Ducks are heading to Las Vegas as the number one seed for the fourth time in the last six years. Oregon men's basketball, Pac-12 champs in the regular season. You know, the Ducks have won a championship in five of the last six years if you count Pac-12 tournaments and you count regular season championships. Is that good for I the men? I think so, yeah. But for the women, they've had a pretty good run themselves, too. Dana the Maestro, no doubt about it. That Rubik's Cube. Yeah, absolutely. The women, yeah, got to wait till next Monday, the uh, Selection Monday coming up on ESPN. It's uh, next Monday at 4 o'clock. Uh, those of you, you can tune in and uh, see where the Ducks go. Right now, Charlie Cream, bracketologist, has them at a number six seed. How many years would we be ecstatic about that? <laughs> and some of the fans I know are so disappointed, but uh, it's a young team. That is just fine. They are just fine. We'll see what happens. Meanwhile, for Oregon men's basketball, uh, the Ducks, a chance to maybe go a little bit higher in the seating. They've been right around a 6-7 as well. And I think that the Ducks personally could get as high as a 4. I think the Pac-12 deserves a little more respect uh, than it's been getting maybe on the men's side. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Oregon will play the winner on the men's side of Washington State and Arizona State, which will be at 1 o'clock tomorrow on Pac-12 Network. Uh, the winner of the 8-9 game will then move on to play the Ducks. Oregon at 11.30 a.m. Pac-12 Network for TV will have an 11 a.m. pregame show on the Oregon Sports Network, and I'm looking forward to it. I love midday basketball. That, to me, is what feels like postseason. When it's midday basketball, yeah. that's postseason Tournament basketball. time. It's tournament time, baby. Uh, the Ducks also uh, got snubbed on the Pac-12 Player of the Year. Did I say that? I'm sorry. We're gonna <laughs> yeah, didn't we're mean gonna to say that. We're going to have yeah. to edit that out, Scott. Um, <laughs> the Ducks uh, did have two all-conference recognize recognize. Is that a word? I don't think so. I don't think that's a word. Uh, the Ducks <laughs> I know were, what you mean, though. Yeah, Chris Duarte and Eugenio Marui, first team all Pac-12. Uh, the Ducks also had Chris Duarte be named the Associated Press Pac-12 Player of the Year. Congratulations to those guys in all seriousness. Uh, we see things through green and yellow lenses, and I thought Chris Duarte was the Player of the Year in my opinion, but he was. what do I know? <laughs> Associated Press thought that he was, too. Uh, he's Terry Johns. I'm Joey Mack. Today's show. It's our final tip-off Tuesday presented by Carl's Jr. We're going to hear from Eric Williams Jr. And we've got Dane Altman coming up right after this. And then for the women? Aaron Bully and Lydia Giomi. They're roommates, by the way, so they're sitting together at home. Got a chance to talk with them yesterday. Hear from them and the big guy, KG, Kelly Graves. That's all just ahead. It's tip-off Tuesday presented by Carl's Jr. Quick timeout when we come back. Dane Altman joining us. The key to success in Las Vegas is what? We'll ask Coach Altman after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. The Big Carl has two juicy charbroiled beef patties, melted cheese, and classic sauce. It's what you order from Carl's Jr. when you want a big meal, a big, beefy, melted, cheesy meal. And with three juicy charbroiled beef patties, the really Big Carl is back. It's what you order when you want a really big, meaty meal, a really big, charbroiled, beefy meal, a really big, beefy, melted, cheesy, juicy, tasty. You get the idea. The Big Carl and Really Big Carl at Carl's Jr. Feed your happy. Available for a limited time at participating Carl's Jr. Restaurants. Price participation may vary. The battle for survival in another world is about to begin. Rent Monster Hunter, now available at Redbox. Based on the popular video game, the film follows Lieutenant Artemis and her loyal soldiers as they are transported to a dangerous world where powerful monsters ferociously rule their domain. In her desperate battle for survival against incredibly powerful and terrifying attacks, Artemis will team up with a mysterious man who has found a way to fight back. Watch Monster Hunter and make it a Redbox night. Visit redbox.com for all the ways to watch. Oregon basketball from Learfield IMG College. Okay, man, this is your time. Maybe you didn't choose this, but you're here now. You're going to go out there and be an all-star caregiver. Cook, clean, be there emotionally and physically. You got to dig deeper. Drive them to physical therapy, doctor's appointments. 
Because that's what caregivers do. Don't give up. Show the world that you're tougher than tough. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Is that a faucet running? That's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. Forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum. That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. I didn't know the trees were so amazing. Yep, and the forest gives us shade, trees to climb. That's awesome. Let's go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. We're back on Tip-Off Tuesday, presented by Carl's Jr. It's the final Tip-Off Tuesday of the year, and it's my pleasure to have head coach Dane Altman joining us. Uh, coach, first of all, just congratulations. A fourth Pac-12 title in the last six years. Five of the last six years, you guys have won either a regular season title, a Pac-12 conference tournament title, or both. What's been the key to success the last six years and beyond? Good players. Man, we've had, <laughs> we've had really good players, and, uh, you know, we've been, we've been fortunate to, um, you know, guys have, have really competed at a high level. Um, you know, they've played for the team. And so um, we've, we've had a good stretch here and um, but really good players. And, you know, the consistency of our coaching staff, I think, helps too. You know, Coach Stubb been here with me for 11 years. And Coach McKenna and Mike joined us uh, six, seven years ago. Josh has been with us the whole time. Um, you know, we, we work together pretty good and, you know, so, uh, really good players is by far the first thing, but the consistency we've had with, with our coaches and our coaches all working together, you know, I think has helped us too. Chris Duarte and Eugene Omarui today named uh, all conference first team. Uh, just a couple thoughts on the seasons for those guys, coach. Let's start first with Chris Duarte. Well, I'm really happy for both the guys. Chris had a really good year. Um, you know, I know he was in the running for player of the year, and, you know, I, I thought he should have got it. But, um, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, we did win the title, so let's go win the tournament and, and really prove that, Chris. And, and Eugene had a great year. Two guys that, uh, you know, game in, game out, really did a great job for us. So really happy for both of them. Eugene Omarui's consistency, Coach, uh, only two games this year that he didn't score in double figures. One of them, he was under the weather, maybe altitude sickness like we talked about, and then the other time he scored nine points. I mean, the consistency for Eugene Omarui was really something. No, Eugene, you know, he brought it every night, Joey. And, uh, you know, the, the stat that sticks out to me about his unselfishness is he's taken 28 charges this year, and, and that's – you know, we never had anybody who's taken that many, and, and that just shows he's all in. He's, he's taking charges for his teammates. Uh, you know, it really changes, I think, the aggressiveness of an offensive team when somebody takes a charge. So uh, Eugene's been off the charts for us. Both those guys, uh, great senior years, and we were so fortunate to, to have both of them here at the University of Oregon. Coach, forgive me, I feel like I probably should know the answer to this question, but how does 28 charges compare to, to the rest of the country? And you said it's the most you guys have ever had. I mean, how impressive is that number at this point in the season? Well, I don't I don't know about nationally, Joey, but I, I know for us it's dang good. <laughs> I know we've, we haven't anybody come close to that number over the course of a season. So, um, no, I uh, I just like his toughness. You know, he, he competes and – and, uh, you know, I wish he'd block out a little better. I'm always on him about that. But uh, other than that, I, I think he does a really good job. You know, Coach, I haven't had a chance to ask you about senior night. Uh, such a weird year, and so there's – seems like it's just had to be that it was a weird senior night uh, on Wednesday. Uh, what, what was that like honoring a bunch of players that have been with you a long time and then some guys that are finishing their careers after only only one year with you so far? Yeah, it was, it was a big group, and, you know, you got – Will Johnson and Luke Osborne have been with us a long time and have done a tremendous job, you know, and they don't get, you know, all the attention. Eddie, who, who's been with us two years, uh, 
on the scout team. You know, those guys don't get the attention, but they do a great job game in, game out. And, uh, and then the four seniors who have played for us, you know, uh, Amari and LJ, Chris and, and Eugene. So a big group that um, has really meant a lot to our program over the years and, and in particular this year. I always like to ask you about the managers too, Coach. Uh, Brian O'Reilly and Sam Stack this year. Uh, you and I have had this conversation over the years that you've had a number of really impressive managers for your squad, and these guys are no exception. Oh, absolutely. I don't you know, would know what we'd do without B2 and, and Sam. Uh, when Brian got here, we had another Brian on our managerial <laughs> staff, so we nicknamed him B2, and it kind of stuck. And uh, But those two guys – been really good um you know i hope they know how much i respect them and how much they mean to our program uh, unselfish you know their time they put in with the players rebounding for them and and then all the other stuff that goes along with laundry and and getting stuff ready um they don't miss a beat i mean it's it's uh, uh a job that uh, you know you gotta love the game and you got to love the team, and those guys have done a tremendous job. Turn it back to the floor, Coach. Uh, Will Richardson, uh, the last few games has just been lights out. Uh, you and I talked pregame on on Sunday that, that Will's really getting back to that shooting form that we saw last year. Led the conference in three-point shooting percentage a year ago. How key has Will's play been recently, and how key is it now heading into postseason for you? Well, Will had a tremendous week. Uh, his aggressiveness offensively uh, really set a tone for us. And uh, we scored 80 twice, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a good number for us. And against Arizona State or Arizona, he was aggressive. So we had three very good offensive games, and, and I really think a lot, of, a lot of that was Will's aggressiveness. So, you know, we need him to stay aggressive, you know, to keep moving the ball. Uh, I think it also helped, you know, some of our other players. You know, Chris had six assists against Oregon State. Eric had five. And and those guys became playmakers, you know. So uh, I think Will's aggressiveness helped us in so many areas. And our ball movement this last week was better. And, um, you know, I think it can still improve as, as we go into the conference tournament. What's the biggest key for your success offensively in the conference tournament and then throughout postseason as we go forward? Oh, unselfishness. You know, guys making plays for each other. Uh, ball movement. You know, recognizing what a good shot is and, you know, what a better shot is for some guys. And uh, uh, so offensively, you know, just getting some transitions important. We've, we've got a few more transition baskets, either off steals or – uh, off long rebounds and we got to continue to get those but everybody staying aggressive everybody making plays for for their teammates uh will keep our offense rolling you know ken palm and the analytics uh, offensively we've made some big strides defensively we've slipped a little bit and you know that's what our practices will be you know centered around here getting ready for the conference title because uh tournament title when you when you have to play three games and three nights to win it you know, your defense has really got to carry you. And right now we've let it slip a little bit because, you know, we've been scoring some baskets and, and haven't been doing quite as good a job on the other end. Is that the biggest key then uh, heading to Vegas, Coach, is just shoring up that defense a little bit? Well, we got to get our rotations better. You know, we, we're trapping a lot. and Sometimes we miss a rotation and give up a wide open shot. And that's got to improve. Our, our rebounding's got to improve. We're giving up too many second shots. And I know we're playing small, but if you're playing small, everybody's got a board, and, and we've just got to do a little better job there, Joey. Lastly, Coach, uh, you guys have had so much success in Las Vegas, even though things are going to look a little bit different uh, this time around, uh, well, a lot different this time around when you head to Vegas. Uh, just how, how exciting is it to, to head back to, to postseason basketball, Coach? Well, you know, we love going to Vegas. And, you know, the thing that will be different, though, you know, our players look forward so much to the fans and look forward to seeing their families and spending time with them. And, you know, it's, it's the, you know, the time where all our, all our players, families kind of get to know each other, mm -hmm. you know, uh, during the season, they all come at different times and to different games, but in Vegas and the NCAA tournament, 
you know, those families are all together, you know, and you just like seeing the, the camaraderie and, you know, families getting to know each other and, you know, uh, all rallying around the team. So it'll be different because our players uh, won't be able to spend time with their families. We'll be in a, in a bubble, you know, and uh, we'll not have contact with the families. And so even though a few of our parents are still coming in, uh, they won't get to spend time with, with the guys. So it'll be different. And in that respect, I, you know, I, I really feel bad for the guys and, and their families because it's always been such a good time, you know, especially when we play, you know, three games and get to the championship game. Mm-hmm. The families all have, you know, three or four days to spend together. You know, it's, it's just kind of a fun situation. Well, Coach, best of luck. Uh, thanks for always taking the time to chat with us on Tip-Off Tuesday pregame shows and looking forward to catching up with you from Vegas. Thank you for the time and best of luck, sir. All right, Joey. Take care. All right, we're going to get a quick timeout. When we come back, switching gears to women's basketball. Kelly Graves joining us. Tip-Off Tuesday presented by Carl's Jr. on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Ninkasi Brewing is proud to be an official partner of the Oregon Sports Network. Independently owned and brewed in Eugene since 2006, Ninkasi is thrilled to launch the Goat Pack, the greatest of all time IPAs, their first all-can variety 12-pack featuring Total Domination Northwest IPA, Tricera Hops Double IPA, Prismatic Juicy IPA, and new and exclusive Juicy Domination Tropical IPA. Find it on shelves now. More information at ninkasibrewing.com. The battle for survival in another world is about to begin. Rent Monster Hunter, now available at Redbox. Based on the popular video game, the film follows Lieutenant Artemis and her loyal soldiers as they are transported to a dangerous world where powerful monsters ferociously rule their domain. In her desperate battle for survival against incredibly powerful and terrifying attacks, Artemis will team up with a mysterious man who has found a way to fight back. Watch Monster Hunter and make it a Redbox night. Visit redbox.com for all the ways to watch. You're listening to Ducks Basketball on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo Hundo P. Hundo P. Adjective. Short for being 100% sure or certain. As in, if we get a puppy, I'll Hundo P. always walk it. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. A ranger station. I'd like to report a bear hug. Okay. I put out my campfire and Smokey Bear hugged me. So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's just letting you know you did good. Bear hug from Smokey Bear. Status update. I'm going to let you go now. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service Ad Council and your state forester. We're back on Tip Off Tuesday, and it is my pleasure to welcome Eric Williams Jr. to the show. Eric and I were supposed to chat about a month and a half ago. Unfortunately, that was right when things shut down, I believe, the first time for Oregon men's basketball. This has been an adversity-filled year. And thanks, Eric, for taking the time to come on and join us again, man. I can't thank you enough. So let's start with just congratulations. You guys won a Pac-12 title. You're wearing the back-to-back shirt. I mean, Eric, just congratulations. How does it feel right now? I feel good. Uh, just, just, you know what I'm saying, getting recruited by, by the coaches and coming here and just wanted to come and win. So finally winning just feels good, just being a bit connected with the team. All right, what was the locker room like? Get, tell me honestly. Uh, we threw Gatorade and stuff. It was fun. It was so fun. <laughs> That's it good was stuff. Fun. Uh, yeah. If I told you, Eric, when, when you committed uh, to the Ducks more than two years ago now, that, that you guys were going to win back-to-back titles, uh, one in your redshirt year, one this year, I mean, what would you have said? Uh, I'd have been like, yeah, I hope it happens, but I didn't, I didn't you know, say I wasn't for sure certain until you know, saying once we got, once my rest year started, I saw how Peyton was and just the 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 culture with the team and the program was good, so it's just carried over. How much did you learn during that redshirt year, Eric? I mean, how much did that help you getting ready for this season? Uh, a lot, just uh, being poised and just just learning what Altman wants and what he what he wants wants his what he wants from his players uh, was just good. So just learning from that just helped a lot this year. 
Eric Williams Jr. joining us. Redshirt Jr., six foot six, two hundred fourteen pound forward. Now, hometown in Michigan, Erica. What's the biggest difference between Michigan and Oregon? Uh, I mean, they're both great guys a lot, but I mean, <laughs> I say Michigan. I say Michigan is more flat. I like Oregon because it's like you know, saying there's there's a scenery, even though there's really not. There's just trees and stuff, but it's better. I like that. Uh, so I got to go back in time with you a little bit, Eric. We'll talk about your journey to Oregon. You scored 50 points and went 20 of 26 from the field in a high school playoff game. And then you followed that up with a 40-point performance as well. So you scored 90 points in two games. Is that like the best stretch of basketball you've ever had? Yeah, that that, that was definitely the best stretch. Uh, I only missed like 10 shots during that span, so it was, it was crazy. <laughs> so, uh, I mean – 90 points that's ridiculous like do you know anybody who scored more points in a two-game stretch than that uh not off the top of my head but i'm sure there has been that's what i like to hear though that's what i like to hear going back uh, also erica tell us about your journey to oregon i mean you, you go to duquesne you do a great job there then you transfer into oregon uh, give fans the story How, how'd you end up here in eugene uh, it was a long, I mean, I really didn't even know I was going to be playing Division one basketball at first. I just, just had just had to take the best opportunity and you can't offer me after a good, you know what I'm saying, state title run my senior year. And then from there, I just worked out, it worked out there very well. I mean, I, I like Buchanan and all the coaches. I just thought I could get somewhere better and we could win at a national, a national standpoint. I think Oregon was one of the ones I liked when I, when I first got into the transfer portal, because they were very honest and didn't need a lot to me. So it was good. When did you first fall in love with basketball? Uh, when I was little, real little. Like, I used to do Nerf hoops at first. Like, that's how little, like, yeah. Do you still have a, a Nerf hoop somewhere in your apartment? Oh, yeah, we have many hoops for days, but we keep breaking them. <laughs> that's something we do. That's, we, we get competitive in that, too, but, yeah, I've done that, too, yeah. Hey, so I, uh, I got to say, Eric, I have had – Many a night when I especially was in school playing in the dorms where, where we would play, you know, dorm basketball. And, and the rules are very different. You know, it's really, truly no blood, no foul. I mean, is that is that what we're talking about here? Oh, yeah. We used to, we, I, even here and at my old school, we even set up the three-point line. We had a whole space to play, <laughs> like a nine-foot. We put it all up, to, screwed it in, break it tape on it yeah. <laughs> I love that Eric Williams yeah, cool. Jr. with us um, yeah. alright I, I look at the way that you play Eric and, and I can just tell that you take a lot of pride in your in your rebounding is that accurate I mean how much pride do yeah. you take in your rebounding I take a lot of pride in it. It didn't really, it, I didn't really start taking pride into it until I got later in my career I realized like it's something I could get really good at so once I realized I could, I mean, I just always attack the boards, offensive, defensively. So what? Just because there's so many possessions in what? the game, you just need an extra one. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt, Eric. I was just curious, like what, what clicked for you? I mean, did you have a moment where you were like, "Oh no, I could be really, really good at this"? Oh, uh, I don't know. I'll probably say like my freshman year, I started rebounding a lot, and I'm like, "Well, if I could rebound like this, I could keep doing it consistently." So I just I always just put that in my head: just rebound first before you think about scoring. Yeah, I said. <laughs> I said last year, Eric, that that I thought you made Peyton Pritchard a lot better. I I, I said that from me watching practice last year, that you were probably the best perimeter defender on, on the team. Do you feel like that way too, defensively, that you can just match up with anybody? Yeah, as far as uh, getting off the dribble and guarding somebody in the post or, or guard uh, any mismatch, I feel like I could, I could take a good advantage of just just guarding Peyton last year on the ball. Like he's one of the best I've, I've been around. So just giving him some problems here and there in practice to help him get better. It helped me during this year, too, just just guarding anybody from the post to a small, fast guard, just, just learn how to move my feet. Keys in Vegas. Uh, you've been there as a, as a redshirt guy. You've seen the teams be successful. Uh, the Ducks, over the last few years, have been pretty darn good in the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, keys to success for you guys? Uh, defense and rebounding. Like, I, I think anything else is, is fine, but right now we got to worry about defense and rebounding. We still gave up too many points in the, paint the other game, so. Teams are going to scout that, so we really got to play defense. Like, that's the main thing that keeps us in the game is, is defense and the boards. We win the boards, we win the game most of the time. You just sounded exactly like Coach Altman. I oh, know, I probably did. <laughs> once you hear it so much, it, 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 it makes sense once you hear it so much. So <laughs> It does. You know, I, so I ask everybody this. I'll, I'll finish on, with, with you on this, Eric. How often do you now hear in your mind when you're playing phrases from Coach Altman? 
you know, simple oh, plays, all the time. those uh, sorts of I things. I try not to just the simple play. Anytime I drive, I'm like, simple play. If I can't shoot it, just two push on stop and make the right play. Or you're going to get screamed at. It's okay, though, but this is how you got to play. It's good. <laughs> I like that. Eric Williams Jr., Eric, I, I got to tell you, I could talk to you for a really long time, but I know you're busy as student athlete and getting ready to travel to Las Vegas. Eric, thanks for taking the time again, and best of luck the rest of the way. I love watching you play. Best of luck uh, down you. the stretch. Thank you, sir. You have a good one. All right, we're going to get a quick timeout. When we come back, talking a little women's basketball with Kelly Graves on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Hi, welcome to the Spicy Drive-In. May I take your order? Can I get the spicy chicken sandwich, please? The spicy chicken is an excellent choice, sir. And to drink? Uh, whatever's fine. Oh, may I make a beverage pairing recommendation this evening? Sure. If we are feeling especially bold tonight, sir, I would recommend the Mountain Dew with that. It's bravely unrestrained with a very alive aroma that pairs wonderfully with your spicy chicken. It's followed by a hint of zesty citrus flavor. Uh, yeah, that sounds amazing. I'm sure you already know this, sir, but remember to appreciate the nose first by giving the Mountain Dew a little swirl to relieve really volatize it. Uh, 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 vola what? To change the flavor compounds and activate your taste buds to get them fully primed for that chicken sandwich. Ah, it's delicious. <laughs> now you're getting the hang of it. The muscular flavor charge characteristics of Mountain Dew make for an absolutely epic mouthfeel when paired with spicy cuisine. It is quite on point, sir. So. Dude, it's a perfect match. Like they were made for each other. So true, so true. When you want to make good food bolder and bold food better, do the do. Your home for Ducks basketball. The Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Queens have mastered the art of tuning out. Jen, there's a spider in the car. We're turning your room into a home gym. See, nothing. But some messages need to get through, like making sure they're buckled up the whole ride, every time. Do whatever it takes to make your child listen. Jen, I friended your boyfriend. Wait, what? Buckle up, sweetie. Never give up until they buckle up. Learn more at safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. To buy your home, you became a house hunting ace. Learned about loans, scoured neighborhoods, and asked the right questions. Now you're queen of your castle. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll feel empowered to own your retirement like you own your home. Go to aceyourretirement.org. Because when it comes to clearing financial hurdles, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Back on Tip Off Tuesday, presented by Carl's Jr., I'm Joey Mack. Uh, I can uh, promise you that uh, we all are having those problems with low network bandwidth, like you heard from Eric Williams and you saw if you were watching Eric Williams Jr., but uh, these two ladies did not have low network bandwidth that we're about to hear from. No, Lydia Giomi, student teaching on uh, Zoom. So, it's, yeah, hey, it works. It works great. She lives with Aaron Boley. They've lived together, the two seniors. I got a chance to visit with them uh, yesterday. By the way, they are maskless because they are roommates. They're family, so no, no alarms there. But let's listen to those two. I want to start with with each of you. Uh, let's let's start with you first of all, because you came in in a, a superstar recruiting class. There were seven of you, with Ruthie and Sab that that you came in, uh, and not just basketball, but uh, student athlete wise. Coming to Oregon, was it everything you expected? Um, I don't think anything is ever as you expected, and I think that's what I learned. <laughs> Right. Um, but, you know, this was my transition into adult life. And you learn as you're transitioning that nothing is ever going to go as you expected. Um, you might get exactly what you asked for in life and it will not look the way that you thought it would. Um, and I also at the same time wouldn't give up anything, you know, for anything else. I wouldn't change anything about it either. So, um, you know, you just realize that whatever the world has intended for you, that's that's what you're going to get. And that's what's going to happen. And there's not much you can do about it. You're just on for the ride, but um, it's definitely been super fun. And there's, it's been filled with a lot of growth, a lot of joy, a lot of learning about myself, about how to work with other people, um, lessons that you're going to take with you forever. 
I want to give you some props, Terry, when uh, Nate reached out to us to do this. I was like, oh my gosh, I miss Terry so much. Aaron and I were both like, we miss Terry so much. And Terry, that year that I broke my hand my freshman year, we would sit in Utah at Cal. I mean, everywhere. We would go all over the Pac-12 and just sit during practice and chat and talk about life and, and knowing you and meeting you. I mean, those are the connections that you feel that like are, I hold so close to my heart because you get to know so many amazing people through this community. Yeah, my gosh, you got to make me start crying here right off the bat. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. That's very nice of you to say. And I enjoyed every moment of it. Aaron, started at Notre Dame, transferred, and this is your fourth year here. Uh, what's it been like for you? <laughs> it's been so similar to what Lydia was explaining with just so much growth involved and so much joy over these last few years that I've had here. Um, since like since I transferred it seems like that was so long ago that it almost feels like my like college true college journey started here <laughs> um, and that I just kind of started over here as a freshman and spent four years went through four years here with this program and um, wouldn't have changed a thing about it um, I feel like I've grown so much and learned so much about myself and um, been able to meet so many amazing people through my teammates, my coaches, the supporting staff. It's been amazing how many um, like wonderful people that I've been able to meet. So I feel, just feel really lucky to have been able to transfer here and to start my journey here and um, have gone through it um, the way that I did. All right, uh, this year with the pandemic, the NCA has said you could keep uh, eligibility. So basically a free year just want to clarify, Aaron, we were talking about this earlier, but, and Lids, you both are moving on. You're, you, neither one of you have decided to come back, correct? Correct. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Real world awaits. <laughs> yes. yes. Lydia, no, I, I know we'll talk about your education here in a, in a minute, but pro ball uh, for you. I, a lot of people don't realize, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were born in Spain when your dad was playing pro ball over there, but is it the, the Canary Island, same island as my table? Uh, it's actually right next to Maite's Island. It's Tenerife. But you want to go over and play pro ball over, over in Europe. And, uh, you know, you got time to do the rest of uh, what you're studying for, which we'll talk about in a sec. But, but talk about that. What do you want to do? Yeah, no, I, I do. I just want to play. Um, just play and have fun and travel. And, you know, while my body can still do it and I'm still able to, I can, I can teach for the rest of my life. And um, like I said, I really want to travel. I you know, can have dual citizenship. And um, I'd like to embrace the culture a little more before I do that and, you know, get make sure my Spanish speaking skills are a little better beforehand and uh, just go, yeah, have fun over there and, and continue to play basketball with a little break from school. <laughs> yeah, and then that, before we get there in here, but then your academics, so talk, uh, go, go ahead and talk about your academics, what you're gonna do after basketball. Um, yeah, I would really, the two paths I was telling Rob Moses a little while ago, but like the two paths that I have picked in life to continue forward are like playing basketball and doing what I've been doing since I was a kid, right? And just doing that childhood thing or being a teacher and working in third grade and continuing to be a child, right? Like <laughs> work with kids. Um, and I do, I wanna work with kids. I wanna be in school kind of for the rest of my life. I'd love to go get my doctorate someday. Um, that would be my goal probably after playing overseas and, uh, yeah, just being in school for the rest of my life. I'd love to go into administration or um, educational policy or leadership of some kind. So that's in the future on my mind. Aaron, uh, I know we, we talked about a press conference where you, you didn't really answer the question whether you were coming back, but I, yeah. just to let you clarify, but then what you want to do with your education. Yeah, um, so I'll be graduating in June with my undergraduate degree here in product design. And um you know, as I we talked about the press conference answer, but I just um, during this season really wanted to try to focus as much as I can on basketball and not um, make any like hard set decisions yet. But most likely um, I'll be moving on to a new path after graduation and um, trying to find a job in design. Uh, these last few years, I feel like I've worked so much on my like own personal growth and trying to figure out what um, is really true, like and authentic to me. And I think this year I've started to realize that um, as we get closer to graduation, that that's, I think that's like pulling me towards um, working in design. And so 
uh, that's just something that I'm really excited about. And most likely that's what I'll um, end up doing after graduation is looking for a job in design. Yeah, I don't know how many times we'd be on a plane trip and I'd look across the aisle and I would ask her, <laughs> what are you drawing over there? What are you doing? <laughs> she was working on something all the time. It was pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. That's part one, Aaron Boley, Lydia Giomi, and uh, we'll have part two coming up. They're fantastic. They're great people, as uh, you can tell. And most of you fans have met them at some point. And coming up, part two, tip-off Tuesday after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. What's it like to grow with the O? At OCCU, we support Duck fans each step of the way by educating our youth with Lucky Duck Savings, celebrating independence with Duck Debit Checking, and rewarding members with the Duck Credit Card. That's how Duck fans grow with OCCU. Learn how you can, too, at myoccu.org slash ducks. The Big Carl has two juicy charbroiled beef patties, melted cheese, and classic sauce. It's what you order from Carl's Jr. when you want a big meal, a big, beefy, melted, cheesy meal. And with three juicy charbroiled beef patties, the really Big Carl is back. It's what you order when you want a really big, meaty meal, a really big, charbroiled, beefy meal, a really big, beefy, melted, cheesy, juicy, tasty. You get the idea. The Big Carl and Really Big Carl at Carl's Jr. Feed your happy. Available for a limited time at participating Carl's Jr. Restaurants by participation maker. Your home for Oregon hoops. This is Ducks Basketball from Learfield IMG College. Whoa, long time no see. It's me, the rock t-shirt in the back of your closet. Dude, remember? You crowd surfed in me, man. But you haven't worn me in like forever. I get it, you're retired, but I still got some rock left in me. So take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. I wasn't prepared to be a caregiver to mom. I had no idea how hard it would be and what I would need to know. Things I never thought of, like how to improve her mood and ways for me to stay positive. Luckily, I found the Caregiving Resource Center from AARP. It had articles about the basics, but also information about the hurdles I was facing. Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Articles, tips, and tools to help you both care for your loved one and care for yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Tip Off Tuesday, presented by Carl's Jr., Terry and Joey, and uh, part two, part two of Lydia Giomi and Aaron Boley. Uh, Aaron, let's start with you on this. Uh, you know, in a non-pandemic year, you guys would have been the senior le leadership as you are here in the pandemic year. But how difficult has that been? I mean, I know these freshmen, they're coming in, but you guys are dealing with uh, things that you haven't had to deal with either. And, and to help them. How has that been? Start with you, Eric. Yeah, um, it's been really difficult. Um, <laughs> uh, we, all of the freshmen and the newcomers that we have are amazing, absolutely amazing people. And they've done an amazing job coming in with this um, like very turbulent year that we've had. But um, we would have been, you know, team captains, leaders, um, regardless of whether or not it was a COVID year. But I think adding COVID on top of everything, on top of all the normal stress and issues that you have with, with a new team like that. Um, it just added a little bit of um, extra stress on top of everything else. <laughs> and I think it just made it, everything a little bit harder. Um, but uh, Lydia and I have, you know, really tried to do um, the best that we can um, to help these kids grow. Because for me personally, like all that I really want to do is um, help show them what it means to be uh, a part of something bigger, you know, help show them what it means to be a really great teammate, what it means to, um, you know, figure out who you are on and off the court and um, make good connections and just be a, like authentic to yourself and be a good person. And I think um, Lydia and I both try to really set a good example um, for these newcomers and young kids and, um, that's all that I would like to <laughs> be able to do um, at the heart of it. Lids? 
Yeah, I would say, um, you know, wanting to like be that leadership role, but also like all of us are experiencing basketball in a pandemic for the first time ever, right? Like you could have done this five times over or four times over and um, this is a completely different ball game this year. It's so different. So just like they're navigating it, we're navigating it. And um, I don't know, you never know if you're doing the right thing. You're trying your best, right? And you never know um, if you're a good leader or if it's working out, uh, trying to be the most authentic version that you can of yourself. And um, I would say that COVID, it, it has been really hard. You know, I'm not gonna lie and say that it hasn't. Um, basketball season is hard enough. College athletics are hard enough alone. And I will say that for me personally, there were times this year where COVID that added like additional, you know, obstacle was like the tipping point, right? You're like, oh my gosh, there are years where I felt like I couldn't do this. And COVID just adding that extra thing onto it where you can't see your family for as long, or you have to, you know, be up earlier every day to do COVID testing, or, you know, you're worried every game if it's going to be your last or when, you know, how predictable is your season? And um, it's hard. And I commend all of the student athletes that are currently doing in, <laughs> everywhere yeah. that are currently doing this because we're, we're learning a lot. Like, it's really impressive what we're going through. Well, you two were part of uh, taking this program to heights it's never been to before, Final Four. And last year, hopefully it was going to be the whole, the whole thing and bringing home the trophy. But you never got a chance to. But you guys were rock stars. What was that like? I know it was Sabrina, but it was the whole team. When Oregon would come into town, I mean, arenas, they would double or triple their attendance figures because the Ducks were there. To be rock stars, what was that like last year? Uh, Lydia, start with you. Um, it's it's been awesome. It's been super incredible, and you know, once in a lifetime opportunity. And it's historical, I think, for women's basketball. And I think I thought about that a couple of times while I was um, experiencing it. But just how historical this is in the world of women's athletics—that this many people are showing up to Colorado games for uh, to watch Oregon women's basketball, right? Um, and how special that is, how unique that is. And especially for other young girls, right. That are, I mean, I didn't have anybody. I had like Lauren Jackson and Sue Bird, right. In 2000, like 2005 for the Seattle storm. Those were the only female role models, ro female role models in general in athletics that I could have told you about Serena Williams, maybe, but, um, that's three. Right. And there's, that's not what luckily that isn't the case anymore right there's so many mm -hmm. other female role models and athletes and i think last year's team was a great example and this year's team as well but specifically those those starters that we had and yeah um upperclassmen that we graduated just excellent role models yeah yeah i remember colorado excuse just a sec Aaron. i remember colorado Sab was having to sign so many autographs. We had to catch the charter to go play UConn. They had to pull her away from the crowd so we could go catch the play to go. So sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there. Aaron, your, your thoughts on that? No, it's okay. I just wanted to add on to that because even just yesterday, I was on a, um, a Zoom call where a woman was telling me that her two sons, her two young sons, they were like seven and 10. Um, she was like, they're going to be so excited that I talked to you. You know, they loved your team last year. And just like, the like diversity of the kids that we have that watch us play and like knowing that you know so many people still think about that team last year and still think about the teams that we had in the past like the support is incredible um and I still to this day even um just beyond the support too like I still look at things that you know Sabrina and Ruthie and Tatsu are doing and I'm like wow I can't believe that I was able to be their teammate there they're so incredible. Um, so I, I just feel very lucky that I was able to be a part of the everything that um, that we were able to achieve the last couple of years. All right, Aaron, start with you, your favorite memory as a duck. This one's easy for me. Um, <laughs> it's the, the moment um, in the Moto Center when the clock ran out and we made it to the final four and like the whole Moto Center was green <laughs> and everyone just went crazy and everyone jumped up off the bench it was that exact moment when the clock ran out and i think it's probably my my favorite moment here at oregon lids yeah mine's the same actually mm -hmm. um 
you know, we'd wanted to beat Mississippi State for a while. That was like, we'd lost to them a couple times and uh, finally beating them, it just felt like yeah. this click, right? It was like this unstoppable, magical feeling. Um, and to have it right here in our home state, you know, the fans are amazing, so. Yeah, the final four was like that thing in the distance that we had been like reaching for and we knew it was there and we had finally like made it to that moment and been successful at reaching it. And it was, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys noticed, I was still in the post game show up there. Of course that we were celebrating, but uh, they started playing shout at the Moda center. Yeah. That was so cool that the NCAA allowed them to do that. Cause sometimes they don't allow that kind of hometown kind of feeling, but the game was over. Come on. It was all duck fans. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, finally, uh, Lids, we'll start with you. Uh, what would you like to say to the fans? Uh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad that we didn't get to play with you guys this year and have you there with us. Um, you guys make such a difference. That's what I would say. I would say you guys make a huge difference in those wins and losses, those tight games. Um, makes me emotional, but just having you guys there. And I would also say do not stop coming, right? I would say... Um, this group that's behind us has so much to offer and so much growth and, you know, so many great things that they're going to bring into this program and do not stop coming because they need you just as badly. Um, you are just as important and integral to this team as any one of us. So, yeah, thank you so much. Aaron. Yeah, I just want to say um, being a student athlete in general is very, very difficult. And knowing that we have the support that we do and seeing all of the people out there who um, love, show love and support us, even now through this pandemic, we can see online all of the people who are still supporting us and watching all of our games on TV. And it means so much to us um, to know that um, we're playing for something that's that's still bigger than than ourselves um that really helps keep us going and um it really does motivate us and i would say the same thing um please keep coming next year um these younger kids are going to be amazing and um i really hope to come back in the future and the um arena is just as packed as it was uh last year and the years before so good to see you two again i i can't wait till this pandemic's over give you a hug but uh, you guys have been terrific uh, so glad I got to know you. So, uh, you know, hopefully you get a long stay in San Antonio here coming up next week. Let's let, hopefully you guys stay there a while. Let's make that happen. Thanks yeah. for the visit. Thanks for coming and being a duck. Thank you, Thank Terry. You, we miss you. Yes. Yeah. And I think they're saying miss the fans as well too. So not just for me, I was just the privileged one that got a chance to talk to them. All right, we got to keep rolling as uh, our chat with Kelly Graves is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Here's KG as I ask him about Aaron Boley and Lydia Giomi. You know, we owe a lot to them. You know, they mean a lot to the program. I think they're synonymous not only with, uh, you know, championships and, and winning and things like that, but they're also, you know, I think they exemplify everything that's good about, you know, the University of Oregon, intercollegiate athletics, they're true student athletes. And uh, two of the more professional, you know, student athletes that you'll find, they, they come in, they get their work done. Um, you know, they, they have, they're great teammates, great attitudes. Um, listen, I, they've left a legacy here that's, uh, you know, really gonna be something to, to you know, people are gonna have a hard time duplicating. They've been here through the golden era, so to speak. All right, uh, Selection Monday coming up, so a little bit of a, a waiting period. What's the plan for the team up until that point? I think we're going to, you know, get together. Uh, obviously, we can't have fans like we've had in the past. I don't think we would have done that anyway this year. Uh, but, you know, this is a new experience for a lot of our players, so we're going to get together uh, best that they allow us to do. I don't know. We might actually watch it in the arena on the big screen. I think they can set that up for us. And, uh, and enjoy hearing our names selected. You know, I, I think um, we're probably going to be somewhere in the five to six uh, seed range. Um, and I can't complain with that. We haven't really warranted uh, getting anything higher or, uh, you know, staying on that four line just by the way we've finished the season. But, uh, you know, it's a new season. And Terry, you just never know what, what happens when, when it clicks for the team. And uh, so we'll just go in and uh, absolutely just try to do our best. And you know what? We're capable of winning some games in this tournament. 
All right, Coach. Well, uh, hopefully you have a long stay in San Antonio. Uh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Well, it sure would. And uh, But, you know, we've got our work cut out for us. There's no question about it. It's I, I'm interested to see what the atmosphere is going to be like there. It's going to be strange, something like uh, we've never seen. But uh, uh, I know we're going to hear our name called. And you can never take that for granted, you know. And uh, regardless of how, you know, we or others feel the season has gone, we're going to be in the field. And uh, and when you're in the field, you have a chance. There you go, the Toyota Kelly Graves interview. And uh, uh, Coach talking about uh, Aaron and, and Lydia. That, that was fantastic. So so glad I got a chance to get a talk to them. And I, I'm glad we could do it I at the same time. I know you fans did. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. They lived together. And those of you still wonder, I said in the beginning, uh, not wearing masks. They live together. They're family. So they, uh, they're allowed to do that. But uh, And then coach, and then it's uh, tournament time. Tournament time for the women. We'll find out Monday on the uh, selection show, Monday at 4 o'clock on ESPN. And the men. We got to come up with a better name for Selection Monday. I know. It doesn't Selection flow. Sunday has a nice ring yeah. to it. We got to come up with something for Monday. Yeah, something that's an M. Right? Yeah. I, well, that's going to be our off-season well, challenge. Yeah, there you go. We'll, yeah, we'll have our... something by next season, I yeah. promise. And and for <laughs> those of you who remember that we promised that and then come to yeah. us and say, hey, did you come up with it? No. <laughs> no. But we'll try. We'll, we'll run, try. Hey, we'll run something by KG. He'll come up with something. He will. He, he always will. likes to say Yahtzee. So it's like an, so Yahtzee Monday? Yeah. He wanted me when they made threes early when he first came to say Yahtzee. And you never did it. I did it a couple of times and over at Washington good. State. There were no fans, and Joe Waltesti looked at me and goes, nah. Nah, it doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> and Kelly, I told him, I said, I did it. I said, you were right next to me. You were right there kneeling, and uh, you heard it. But he's like, yeah. You did it? Okay. I'm sorry I didn't didn't hear it. Anyway. Well, so, that's another a, side story it, there. It is. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> hey, this has been a, a, a an odd year. There's no doubt oh. about it. Um you know, I, I just want to say for our last tip-off Tuesday presented by Carl's Jr., shout-out to Scott Phillips. Yes. Helping us uh, direct the He's show and uh, get all the videos edited. And, you know, we're, we're doing more than just a radio show now, and Scott's a big reason for that. Uh, Terry John's always getting interviews, getting everything together. I mean, man, what a year it's been, and it's not over yet. So Selection Monday and Selection Sunday, men's basketball, 1130 on Thursday. They'll take on the winner of Washington State and Arizona State. For Terry Johns, Mitchell Lee back in the OSN studio. I'm Joey Mack. Postseason basketball, baby. The battle for survival in another world is about to begin. Monster Hunter, now available at Redbox. Based on the popular video game, the film follows Lieutenant Artemis and her loyal soldiers as they are transported to a dangerous world where powerful monsters ferociously rule their domain. In her desperate battle for survival against incredibly powerful and terrifying attacks, Artemis will team up with a mysterious man who has found a way to fight back. Watch Monster